Uh, blessings, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, it's uh, it's been an interesting day, uh, but uh, yeah, the word uh, that uh, my heart uh, have brought about this morning that I feel the Lord wants me to speak to you about has to do with truth uh, because uh, I mean <sighs> let's make things clear things are a bit uh, messed up out there these days uh, with this problem of truth uh, we see uh, the reality of the life that we are living today which is <laughs> in to put it in good terms uh, dark dark uh, because uh, we've never seen as much uh, catastrophe together on uh, one season as we have seen in the last uh, few years and more specifically in the last uh, year two years uh, we've seen how this year <laughs> it broke all the records of hurricanes and storms and uh, earthquakes and you name it and we've had uh, COVID uh, luring around for almost uh, 10 months now and uh, if I continue to add uh, it's, 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 it's many other things I could say about locusts and uh, wars and uh, bombings and uh, shootings and uh, you name it everywhere everywhere I mean uh, from uh, east to west from north to south and uh, and, and when we put it all together, we can firmly say that uh, uh, the Bible tells us these are the birth pains. And we know how the birth pains work. They start uh, narrowing to the very end uh, of, of the time uh, when, when uh, the mother is, uh, is ready getting in labor, ready to, to, for the child to be born. Well, guess what? Uh, we are pretty close in these pains and uh, I, I can see how it would not be a surprise if Jesus uh, came and showed up in the next uh, few uh, days or months or years. I pray that would be hours uh, because that would be amazing, no doubt. However, uh, we need to continue plowing and believing that, that God will redeem these times. Uh, but uh, uh, while that happens, we see how society in the last uh, few decades, especially in the last few years, has been deteriorating uh, rapidly uh, because of this uh, uh, newborn relativity, relativity new uh, modern ways of uh, people seeing things my truth is my truth uh, your truth is yours and it's all fine and as long as you don't uh, jump over my truth we are all happy and uh, don't bother me with what you believe and I won't bother you with what you believe and uh, with what I believe I mean and that's a bit of a craze uh, without a doubt it's a bit of a craze we are truly concerned about uh, how these things are going to end up. Meanwhile, the Bible is emphatic, the Bible is definite, the Bible is final with regard to these matters because uh, there is no way that uh, uh, anybody will be happy with those that, 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 that have these ideas about relative truth uh, with regard to what the Bible says because uh, on the day that Jesus was being judged by Pontius Pilate uh, just before he was put on the cross um, they had a conversation a conversation that was moved by the fact that his accusers were saying that he was arguing to be the king of the Jews and so it comes so it comes the conversation when Pilate says, uh, uh, so are you really a Jew, uh, the king of the Jew? And Jesus answered, you say that I am king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify of the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listen to me. To which uh, 
Pilate answered the very famous question, what is truth? And this is the question that everybody should be asking these days because nobody knows any longer what is truth because nobody seems to have uh, any idea what uh, truth means anymore. And, uh, and yet uh, Jesus is saying it categorically, I have come to testify of the truth and those who listen to me know the truth. Everyone on my side uh, is on the side uh, of the truth. Uh, and, uh, and, and if we are going to believe what the Bible says, and I believe what the Bible says, we are going to have uh, to contend uh, with the reality of a fact uh, that is uh, self-evident, that there is only one truth. And I say that it is self-evident because it does not matter how many people out there argue about what is truth and what is not. There is only one truth. There cannot be to philosophically it is impossible to have a relativity in truth because the, the, the statement itself become false in, in it. Uh, it, it. There is either truth or there is none and that's the bottom line and, uh, and the Bible shows us clearly God, Jesus Christ in here is, is, is clearly saying I am truth in 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 John 14 14 6 when he is confronted by Thomas uh, with regarding with regard to to the way to come to the father Jesus says uh, a statement that, uh, that that leaves us all speechless because uh, in being truth is dead put against the wall every single one of those that do not believe he says I am the way, the truth, and the life. What he's saying is, I am the one way, the one only way to come to the Father. I am the truth, the only one truth that it exists. And I am the life, the only giver of life. And what he's saying is simply that uh, if you believe your truth is the truth and uh, you don't believe what uh, this truth, statement uh, affirms there is a great conflict between you and God that is either you don't believe in God or you believe that the God that you that uh, and or the God that you believe is not uh, um, a real uh, God and <laughs> you know I mean it does not matter what uh, uh, these evolutionists say, I mean, there is enough evidence about the truth of creation and the truth of God that uh, everyone with, uh, with uh, a bit of brain in their head uh, would uh, understand the, 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 the falsehood uh, hidden in those words. However, we have here on, the, on John 16, uh, when Jesus is literally saying goodbye to his friends, to his disciples, getting ready to go to the cross, he simply tells them, uh, when the spirit of truth come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He speak only what he hears. Listen to this. What he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. Uh, I need to repeat that because this is way, way, way too deep and uh, you may not see it that way. But listen to this. When the Spirit of Truth come, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears and He will tell you what is yet to come. And every single part of this, we could break it down into a specific statements the spirit of truth that Jesus is talking about, he has presented it through his gospel in many occasions, in all of the gospels, specifically in the book of John, you find his statement about the spirit in many occasions, but specifically in chapter 14 of the book of John, he uh, uh, affirms clearly, I will not leave you alone, I will send you a helper, and, uh, and the spirit 
speaking that he's doing in there is affirming that this helper is the this helper is the bearer of the truth, the truth that is sent from him. And here he's saying, uh, over there he's saying, uh, he will remind you everything that I had taught you. And here he's saying, he will speak only what he hears. From whom? From the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so that leaves us with a position to either accept the word of Jesus Christ as saying that he is truth, he is the truth, or <coughs> simply not believing at all what Jesus is saying, because there is no doubt what the affirmation is in here. But most interesting, interesting, <laughs> most interesting, uh, he will tell you that he is yet what, what it is yet to come, and that put us against the wall with a question. The Holy Spirit will tell us what is yet to come. And we see what has come in the last few years. But what else is there to come? I want to tell you something. Uh, those of you who know the Lord Jesus Christ, those of you who live a faithful life of commitment to God, have a true relationship with a living God, a God that speaks to His children, a God to, who cares for His children, a, a God who, who, who carries the burden of His children like Jesus tells us in, uh, in, in Matthew 11. And, uh, and here He is telling us something extraordinary. He will tell you what is yet uh, to come. I, I can tell you one thing. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you would not understand what this means. But for those of you who are a follower of Jesus Christ, this word is significant. Because what it's saying is that we will have four warnings of the things that are to come. And uh, what is to come in now, it's a lot. I mean, we have a virus that we don't know whether it's going to end it tomorrow it's going to last another 10 years we have vaccines that are uh, scientists experts professionals in the matter are not sure whether it's going to do this that or the other many say that it's, it's good for it's effective 80 percent of the time many say that it's effective 90 percent of the time many say that it's going to stop the virus others say that it won't stop transmitting the i mean <laughs> i can tell you that certainly there is great confusion out there but there is definitely one truth and that truth is it does not matter what vaccine do you take it does not matter what circumstances uh, you accommodate to your life uh, to make you stretch your life a bit longer. There is a disease that nobody escapes from, and that disease is sin. That is one that is the worst cancer that has overtaken man in, from the very beginning. And this is the one disease that we should all be bent in, in healing, in finding a cure for, in finding a vaccine for, in finding a solution for, yet no one seemed to care. We have all taken for granted the fact that this one disease is 100% mortal and that no one escapes from it. Sin kills everyone so every single one of us that are here today are going to end up in a grave it does not matter how much effort we put we might extend our life a year two years 10 20 100 at the most but we are all going to die and that is one truth that is categorical but there is another truth that we know for a fact in first corinthians 15 uh, Paul says, all death well is your thing, your sting. And this is because at the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ took away the sting of death. He is the inoculator. He is the one who has given us the, the healing truth. 
about death and he is the one who has given us the cure for this disease one that will still kill our body but our souls or spirit will continue to live with him when we part from this body that is a truth that you may not believe which is okay you don't have to believe it that's the beauty of it it does not change the fact that it's truth because if you know something for sure if you know something that is truth is that you are going to die whether it happens tomorrow or a year from now or 20 or 30 or 40 years from now you will part from this earth but there is another truth that a lot of people try to hide there is another truth that the enemy the devil has uh, uh, a, a camouflaged in such a way that uh, plenty of people out there don't believe it which is we are eternal our body is perishable but we are are going to believe to live uh, for eternity the question is where is that eternity going to happen and this is a question that you should be asking yourself if you have any whether religious or not believe in god because let me tell you something your answer is going to determine what happened to your soul and if your answer is i don't believe in that like i said before it's fine you don't have a, to believe it but if your answer is i believe that we have a soul and uh, we are going to many people says be transformed into something else other people say we have to uh, carry our burden and do a lot of good and save a lot of people and do this and do that and do the other and yet and yet in uh, in in the book of ephesians in chapter 2 Jesus is clear, Paul is clear in tells in tell is not that it is by the grace of God that we are saved through faith, not by works that nobody will glory themselves, because all the glory from that deed belong to God. And yet we insist in carrying our way and doing it our way and believing our way. Uh, when the truth is hitting us right uh, on the face we live a perishable body we are going to part from this earth and we need a solution to that conundrum to that situation we need a way and again i repeat to you to you john 14 6 jesus says i am the way i am the truth i am the life and 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 there is another verse that i wanted to present to you which i believe is important and this verse might be able to help you understand a bit more of what i'm talking about here when jesus was talking to his disciples in john chapter 8 uh, whether you read the bible or not you have the scripture here that you can you can read or you can look it up on the internet or if you don't have a bible or look in your own bible if you do but it says here that uh, <laughs> that the jews who believed in him were there listening and he says if you hold that to my teachings you are really my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free and there's your answer now you will tell me but 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 that's not but it is what it is now your truth might not coincide might not agree with what you're seeing on the screen in here but the reality that you know that your body is dying that this life is fleeting that uh, every morning you wake up and look in the mirror and you find a new wrinkle or a new gray hair or a new something that gives you evidence that uh, uh, we are living a life on this natural earth that is perishable that is limited that it has a, a cat or you say oh my goodness 
uh, that, that, that he has a term that is going to come to an end. And if you are able to admit that, you are going to have to agree that there is, this is the one truth that is unavoidably sharp, firm and definite truth. And if you seek to find an answer to that truth, you must seek it through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because He is the only bearer of an answer to that truth. The only truth, the only way, the only life. And that's the bottom line. I could speak to you a lot more about this subject and try to show you how it is important that you face this reality. Because let me tell you something. Um, it's fine if you don't want to believe. You don't have to believe. But if by any way I have waken up your curiosity, just <laughs> go and ask God, you yourself, in person. Just sit down or lay down or stand up or go on your knees or do it any which way you like and have a, a truthful, honest, deep, from the bottom of your heart, question with that God that you may or may not believe and, and ask Him. Is this true? Is Jesus really the truth? Can you show me? Just tell him, I mean, if you show me the truth, I'm going to believe you. And, uh, and I guarantee you that you're going to have a surprise. Because uh, we serve a living God. We serve a God that cares for you. And if he may not answer other things to you, this one answer is for sure going to be heard by you because he cares for you this is the reason why one day and which is not uh, december 25th by the way uh, however celebrating on that day is just fine with me but one day he literally left uh, his realm of eternal and came into his creation and took the body of a baby and was born in a manger so that uh, through living this life and giving us this gospel and allowing himself be put be nailed on a cross you could have that life that he's promising and if he did all of that he will be happy to answer this one question from you because he cares so there you have it i leave it in front of you i am not hoping that you will uh, do this in one single sitting it might take you a little while but give it a shot you have nothing to lose and believe me time is of essence because things are not getting easier you see how the walls of time and the walls of circumstances are pressing against us how we feel every day a bit more uh, pressured by these pandemics and by these uh, uh, many other things that are happening in the world and you may be one who need this conversation with God the most. So, take a minute, sit down, lay down, stand up, go on your knees, whichever way you prefer, and have this conversation. You have nothing to lose. You have absolutely nothing to lose. And if you have uh, any question, if you have uh, any question please feel free to contact us i mean you can literally through facebook or youtube find our information and uh, get in touch with me and if you if you contact me i'll be happy to give you my phone number we can connect through whatsapp it does not matter in which part in which part of the world 
you you are and if you speak English Spanish or French I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you uh, but uh, you have to take the first step uh, for sure I do not pretend that things are going to be easy but I do believe that if you seek him you will find him because that is a promise that he's given you he says seek and you shall find knock and the door will be open for you and that is a guarantee from him you can find us at our website newjerusalem.ca or moradortemporal.com or directly send us an email at contacto contacto at nueva jerusalem.ca uh, in, in the website you will find a phone number that you can call or you can send me an email and I'll be more than happy to give you my personal phone number if you need it so that we can have this conversation because really Jesus cares for you he wants to bring you into his fold he wants to show you truth to break that chain to remove that veil that is binding you to a great lie that is the things of this world and uh, again you will be surprised for now God bless you have a wonderful day and may the Lord keep you and bless you and may he fill your heart with curiosity with desire to seek him and with a new fresh passion for learning about him thank you Thank you again.